The misrepresentations and ignorance surrounding arguments against fluoridation never ceases to amaze me. Let me share with you a few of them. First, there's a common belief that countries which fluoridate water have less tooth decay than non-fluoridated countries. Well, this is completely untrue. Yes, the U.S. with its fluoridated water did experience a big decline in tooth decay in the past 60 years. But the same decline in tooth decay took place in European countries and other countries in developed countries which had no fluoridation. The World Health Organization made it clear that there is absolutely no difference in decay between the small number of developed countries that do fluoridate their water and the majority that do not. In truth, the majority of developed countries do not fluoridate their water. Actually, more people drink water fluoridated in the United States alone than in the whole of the rest of the world combined. And in Western Europe, 97% of the population drinks water with no fluoride added to it. What few people know is that fluoride affects many parts of the body besides the teeth. It has the ability to interfere with the functions of your brain, for instance. Studies conducted in China have shown quite clearly that fluoride lowers the intellectual ability of people. You see, fluoride disrupts our endocrine system. There is even recent research that shows fluoride can increase the severity of many kinds of diabetes. And since diabetes became widespread in the last 40 years, this is something to be taken very seriously. It has long been known by those informed that being exposed to fluoride interferes with good thyroid function. There is even a lot of information about how fluoride can increase the risk of developing Alzheimer's disease, and all of these important pieces of information come from the National Research Council in the United States, who did a very interesting scientific review of the effects of drinking fluoride in water. Okay, few people realize that fluoride is the only, quote, medicine, unquote, which is added to public water. Of course, chlorine is added to water to control the bacteria that may be present, but this is not considered a, quote, medicine either. Many keen on bringing fluoridation into countries like New Zealand, and there's right now a big push to do this, have concocted all sorts of arguments, such as claiming that fluoride is a, quote, nutrient, unquote. Meanwhile, the National Academy of Sciences has vehemently confirmed that this is not the case. And most countries in Europe have completely rejected fluoridation because they are aware that the water supply is a totally inappropriate way to deliver fluoride, most definitely not a, quote, medicine, unquote. With a medicine, it is the patient who has the right to decide which medicine or drug to take. Fluoridation of the water, as it is done now in the UK, Ireland, and a few areas of the United States, and if government has its way, is soon to be forcibly introduced to the whole of New Zealand. This is ridiculous, of course, since fluoride in water brings virtually no benefit to teeth whatever. Fluoridation, although it may provide good PR for the dental trade associations, is bad medicine. What is needed is not fluoridated water making people more vulnerable to fluoride toxicity, but rather an improvement in diet, eliminating high levels of sugar and junk food. It is sadly true that children from low-income families have high levels of tooth decay. Education is the answer, not fluoridation. Another aspect of fluoridation, which very few people are aware of, is that fluoride's toxic effects are cumulative. According to a 500-page scientific review, fluoride can negatively affect your bones, your brain, and even your blood sugar levels. Actually, there are more than 100 studies published illustrating the harm that fluoride does to the brain alone, as well as another 43 studies showing how fluoride can reduce the IQ in children. Let me share with you just some of the conditions which fluoridation and overexposure to fluoride can lead to. First, there are muscle disorders. 
arthritis. Increased tumor and cancer rates damaged sperm and increased infertility. Inhibited formation of antibodies and immune system disruptions. There is no way that fluoride should be ingested through the waters that we drink, and this is why the EPA's research laboratory have classified fluoride as, and I quote, a chemical having substantial evidence of developmental neurotoxicity, unquote. Okay, not long ago, Paul Conant, Ph.D., director of the Fluoride Action Network, called FAN, was asked to debate Mike Berridge, Ph.D., of New Zealand's Maligan Institute of Medical Research on the topic of whether or not it would be wise to fluoridate all of New Zealand's water. It's an important issue, both in the United States as well as in New Zealand and the few countries in the world where water fluoridation is still used. At the moment, only 52% of the population of New Zealand gets fluoridated water. However, the government has proposed legislation that requires men to introduce water fluoridation for the entire country. There is an important short video. I highly recommend that you watch it on YouTube, given the information above, and decide for yourself. In 2015, The Cochrane Collaboration, which is considered the gold standard in evidence-based reviews, released a comprehensive review pointing out the truths that are nearly impossible to dispute. Fluoride does not work to prevent cavities, yet it is clear that it does cause harm. What concerns me is this. In New Zealand, where until now fluoridation has been something that the local councils and the population itself were consulted as to whether or not to bring into the area in which they live. Now, what the New Zealand government has now done is simply to completely remove this possibility so that they and they alone have the right to decide if the entire country is to be fluoridated. My question is this. Whatever happened to our democracy. Thanks for listening.